Um, Seventeen and a half minutes past this eight. This is Paul Henry. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's meet the panel. Tony Field, our money man. Tony, Hello, good morning. Tom. And Anna Reeve is with us, um, Glow Cell Alopecia Ambassador. Hi. Is it Glow? Global. Global. <laughs> Why did I say Glow Cell? I don't know. It was written down somewhere. I'm going to, uh, anyway. Yell at someone. Oh, it was written down here as Global. <laughs> And it was funnily enough, funnily enough we googled is it. A hair and loss, uh, really? Remedy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's no. Yeah. There's no. Oh, doesn't doesn't go for no. no. Is that doesn't. for male pattern baldness? God. Sure. Oh, I've boxed myself into a corner from which there's very little return. How do I even get back onto the script now? How do I even get back to talking to the panel about just things now? Just move into now? a topic yes, real quick. No quickly. one will notice. So right. I should just launch into a topic yep. like it's noticed. just happened. Yeah. Mm. Go or should we go it. to an ad break? <laughs> it's just the whole thing's mucked up now. I'm not offended, so it's okay. Tony's used to it. Okay. Shall I introduce them again? Go well, that would just, again. No, that would just waste more time. Luckily, we're not um, live. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. We can do this again. Oh, it'll be bloody auto cues fault. Um, all right, let's talk the rugby, uh, the rugby World Cup. And this, what Tony, you can only look at the fact that nine members of Parliament are being partially funded to go, but are earning their salaries when they're going as a junket. Yes, and look, I, I'm surprised that they're not all saying, "Well, for a start, if we are going to do this, we're going to all take leave." And also, this big surprise. I would have thought there'd be rules that, you know, you can't have corporate sponsorship mm. around anything to do with something that's yeah, you would think. happening with Parliament. I suppose the one thing is that when they get back from the trip, I mean, it's very clear, you know, who the sponsors are and who the MPs are. We can be sure that the parliamentary press gallery will be looking very closely mm. at just every <clears throat> potential decision. I mean, if you're sitting on, for example, some select committee and potentially, you know, doing an issue, looking at an issue that affects one of their sponsors, yeah. everyone is going to be looking very, well, the green, very this closely. Is, yeah, this is the issue that the Greens are most concerned about, that effectively it's cash for access. But if you look at the sponsors, the people that are helping them on the way, like Air New Zealand, um, Sky, I mean, they're actually not sending anyone. I think the ANZ are possibly someone's going. But, I mean, the thing that, that annoys me about it, Anna, is these people are paid to service, yeah. and they're getting their money while they're, they're not taking leave. Which is This ridiculous. is an official trip, so they're Votes still count, but are they working? No. Who wants to watch a bunch of MPs wear short shorts and play a horrible game of rugby? There will be it'll be an awful game. They're not going to be good, it'll right? It'll be awful. Yeah. No, no, they're not going to be it's good. The at whole all. thing just seems absolutely ridiculous. And why do they even do that? And it's been going on for eons, hasn't it? Parliamentary yeah. rugby, it's, but that's just part of it. All I think in cricket as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh God. Hillary's always cranking on about the fact that <laughs> rugby is for now. men, and oh god. Anyway, we're we're all we're all um, antsy on it. They just shouldn't be going, quite frankly. Unless, uh, guys, if you want to take leave and you want to pay to go over there, that's absolutely fine, of course. Yeah. But maybe you don't like rugby quite that much. Um, all right, borrowing to invest. Now, I talked about this this morning because what we do know, Tony, is money is going to be cheaper than it yes. has ever been before in New Zealand to borrow. That's right. And look, um, I know you're going to ask me what should we invest in potentially you know, with interest rates. The slow. I, two part answer. First, the boring part. I actually agree a little bit with what Martin Hall said earlier in the show. I mean, financial markets have done so well, housing markets done so well in Auckland that I worry we're almost at the top. Not a great time. The whole so, country is not Auckland. We, yes, I mean, we've but, seen already this week seventy two thousand dollars is the asking price for a two bedroom rental property in Dannyburg, returning twelve percent. So there's part of me that thinks, you know, this is, is perhaps, you know, are you borrowing to invest in something just when the market is reaching the peak? Yeah, yeah. But then I thought, well, how could I think outside the boxes? I knew you wouldn't let me get away with leaving here without some suggestion. And I thought, wait a minute, we've got the Star Wars movie Force Awakens coming out at the end of the year. Now, I'm not going to suggest... Where you is buy this going? Now, you're not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to suggest that you buy Disney shares, but I thought, what about if you and I, Paul, we get together, borrow some money, and we buy up all those old Star Wars toys, the ones that are Where still... Where do we get them from? We're going to go buy them from a collector's market. You know, the ones in the original packaging, yep, the toys yep. are still in there. We sit on those. Movie comes out. The toys soar in value. And at the same time, if the Kiwi dollar's down a bit, we might even pick up a bit of a currency gain. Now, when I that's very interesting. When I mentioned this to you, Anna, before yes. you knew we were going to talk about this, yes. you said, well, it doesn't really concern me because I'm, you know, I haven't got money to invest and I've got a young family and everything yeah. like that. You very soon will be able to go out and borrow a million dollars at 3%. Yes. $30,000 a year will give you a million dollars to invest. That's crazy. What will you invest it in? I think what you were saying before, buying a rental property in somewhere where it costs absolutely nothing does sound like the smart buy thing Danny to do. Virk. Yeah. You yeah. could buy the Danny whole town. Yep. And Is it even could... a towel? Like, would it be considered? Oh, sorry, Danny Virk. I'm sorry. We won't get it back again. Oh. Yes, it's a town. Yes, okay. Um, they've got a warehouse, for goodness sake. It's a town. A warehouse. Well, that makes it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, can you imagine people will do this? I mean, your idea is interesting. I mean, why wouldn't you go out and fill your garage with milk powder? You're buying at the bottom of the market. <laughs> 
Actually, when I first suggested that, you said, does it have a use-by date? That would be the worry, wouldn't it? I've got all this old milk powder in the garage. <laughs> and you need all that storage space. Have mm. you got the storage space, Paul? I've got a bit of storage space, but I'm not necessarily suggesting I'll do it. Will you do it? Will you borrow some money to invest? <laughs> no, actually, and I, you know, we obviously are not authorised financial advisors. I'd be really wary right now of borrowing any money to invest. Look, if you're buying, if you're borrowing money to buy a house to live in, go for it. But I'm going to put my boring mm. hat back on and say I'd be really wary right now. I'm going to agree with Martin Hawes. A lot of people, a lot of boring people die poor, you know. <laughs> um, mind you, a lot of exciting people go bankrupt. But yes. um, at the same time, you know, you'd be up for a risk, wouldn't you, Jim? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind being able to sort of borrow a bit more money and maybe buy a, a rental property or something. That'd be quite nice. I think that's safe. I like your idea yeah. of the Star Wars toys, actually, Tony. Right, Good we'll boy. be back in a moment yeah. with our panel and we'll cover a couple of different subjects. Don't look All right, great to have you back. Uh, this is Paul Henry on a Thursday morning. Tony Field and Anna Reeve are our, um, I was going to say correspondents, commentators <laughs> yes. this morning. Um, all right, just finally, would you want to buy the the property of a famous person? The reason I'm talking about this, Anna, is um, Neverland has been for sale for mm. a donkey's age now. And finally, the real estate agents have decided they want to distance themselves from Michael Jackson. They've renamed it. There is no mention that it was Michael Jackson's ranch, but no one wants to buy it. Yeah, well, I think that's a fair enough. If, the, if it's yeah. been on the market for years now so if you can't get rid of it obviously Michael Jackson's tainting it but if you're anyone if you're spending that much money in a house you can do your research you're going to know it's his house it's not going to really yeah. change it They're but wouldn't that wouldn't it add value like the other day Frank Sinatra's not. house it's just on the market now five and a half yeah. million much cheaper than the the, the Neverland um, but you know wouldn't you buy it because it was Frank Sinatra's or Michael Jackson's I think Frank Sinatra and Michael Jackson's so different I wouldn't yeah. want to buy Michael Jackson's house really no and if, if I had that much money I want to start from scratch or buy something that's beautiful I, it's not a very I don't okay, think it's a so, nice house so you the fact that it I, was Michael Jackson's would put you off yeah, I think so. And you can see why they've completely revamped it, because it would be like living in a museum. It was yeah. tired. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned Sinatra's house, and we were talking during Which that. actually mm. is like living in a museum, because they've actually kept his collections of music. Yeah. I mean, the stuff is just like he left it. But And, of course, also it's that mid-century, mid-20th century classic design. So if you were buying it because the house itself, the design of the house appeals yeah. to you, that yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But oh, if you, exactly, and it overlooks Palm Springs, and all of Palm Springs is a museum, really. Yeah. But if you just feel like, you know, I was thinking, imagine living in Graceland. I mean, the problem with living in Elvis' house is you'd have all those tourists coming through your living room every yeah. day when they were looking yeah. around. Well, you could, if you <laughs> Which, bought you know, it, you, you could stop them nap. coming through the living room. I don't yeah. think you have to have them coming through the living room, Tony. Um, but so would you be put off buying a famous person's house if the famous person was Michael Jackson or was someone considered to be undesirable? Not necessarily, but, you know, if it's going to look like it's completely kitted out and all their stuff, then I don't think that would appeal to me. I yeah, think. I'm not a fangirl, so I don't really no. care. It's what the house is like, and if the house is beautiful, sure thing, but yeah. if it's Maybe ugly, having... old, tired-looking building... It, it's that's... weird, though, isn't it, because Sotheby's have completely laundered Mm. Neverland. Uh, what is it called now? Um, Sycamore Valley Ranch. Yes. So they've completely laundered it. They have washed it of anything that is Michael Jackson, which I, come back to the thing, I would have thought that's taken value off it, not added value to I'm it. I'm surprised that no one's bought it because mm. he has legions of fans and people are obsessed with him. I'm really surprised. Although, what was it going for, that 30... It was ridiculous yeah, over money. 100, over 100 yeah. million. Well, it's a big ranch. Yeah. California, it's a nice yeah. place. You'd think there would be some sort of I point of which... I would buy it for the property. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you take out some of the really over-the-top stuff, but you want to leave something. Mm. You would think, but they haven't people, done that. This was Michael they haven't Jackson's done that. house. And so this whole th cause the conversation has come full circle because... Money is cheap, <laughs> you know. So maybe that is what we should be picking up to make a little bit of sly cash on together. the side. <laughs> we could pull, borrow, pull, borrow money, pull it together. All right, guys. Thank you very much, Tony Field. Um, thank you very much for coming in, Anna Reeve. Thank, thank you very you much. Very we will catch you back again. That's the panel.